In this video you will learn the modern techniques of advanced latex mold making. Latex molds are still professionals first choice for architectural restoration, cast stone, faux brick veneers, decorative lawn and garden ornaments, ornamental candle making, soap making, statuary and craft, and fine art reproductions. In this video we are going to teach you how to make a complex two-part mold. We also demonstrate how to make a perfect parting plane for your two-part mold, including a very simple keying system. In addition, we will introduce you to cement casting techniques. Our first step in setting up this model for mold making is to create a proper box base. Ideally this should be a couple inches larger all the way around than the circumference of the base of the acorn. Set up the box, score the lines on it so that it will bend easily. Fold the edges up. Make sure you check all your dimensions repeatedly. You know what they say, measure twice, do it once. After you have tested it to make sure that the box is the right size and the walls all fit together, you can use whatever is handy for putting it together. In this case, we use duct tape. Make sure you have enough tape on there so that the box doesn't come apart during the mold making process. Remember that this will be holding the rubber, the model, as well as a plaster shell ultimately. So everything has to be taped together nice and tightly. Take your time on this step. Remember at this point you're just getting things set up so there is no rush here. After you've got your little box set up, it's time to glue the acorn down to the box. Be very generous with your glue gun and hold it in place firmly and allow the glue to dry. Make sure it's centered on the box. Our next step is to apply shellac as a sealer to the model. What this does is it allows for an easy release of the latex from the model after the mold making process is complete. We cut our shellac 50-50 with denatured alcohol. This allows the shellac to go on easier, get into all the little pores and crevices of the model, and at the same time dry faster. Keep your eye open for puddling. You do not want to have any buildup of shellac in areas that would lose detail. Make sure you coat the cardboard box as well, as this will ease in the release of the latex from the cardboard. We use orange shellac because it provides us with a color difference of the model from where it is coated and where it is not coated. This makes it easier for you to tell where you need to add more shellac. Make sure any drips that fall down to the bottom of the model get either brushed over or wiped away. After your first coat of shellac has been applied 
and is allowed to dry completely, you add at least one more full coat of shellac over the entire surface, including the box base. It's really important that everything gets covered thoroughly as this will ease in the release of the latex from the model as well as from the box. In this advanced mold making video we use a special technique for setting up the parting plane of our model for the mold making process. The rectangular shape of this small cassette box will act as our guide for making our keys. The process is actually quite simple if you follow the visual cues provided here. As shown here, make your marks onto the file folder paper to make your key. Try and keep your marks as close to the shape of the box as possible to allow for continuity in all your keys. This is really one of the best keying systems out there for building up a parting plane on a mold. Make sure that you make all your lines long enough so that you can complete the key as is required. After you've completed it on one angle, you then go to a 90 degree on another angle and make the cross of the key. Following the visual cues shown here for making your mold key, as you put together all the cross marks on your file folder paper, you will see that ultimately you've produced one of the best keying systems available. Our purpose here in establishing a parting plane on our mold is to allow us to produce a mold which will be easily removable from an object that has severe undercuts or would normally be impossible to demold out of a one-piece mold. Learning these techniques now, along with a little bit of ingenuity, will allow you to mold objects in the future that most people would consider impossible. Remember, the whole object behind creating a parting plane is to choose the path of least resistance when you are demolding your object. You are now ready to cut out your first key. Using a sharp X-Acto knife, follow the lines and cut out the outside edges of the key. Be careful, your X-Acto knife is sharp and you need to hold the paper tightly so that it does not slide around when you're cutting, but at the same time, you do not want to cut yourself. If you need to use a guide when you're cutting your keys out, feel free. Whatever works best for you. Use a pen to indent the lines which will be the folding points of the key. This will make it easier for assembling of the key to the parting plane. We're now ready to remove our first key. As you can see, the indents made by the pen marks make it easy for us to fold the key. Continue this process until you have enough keys to complete your parting plane. As you can see here, I try to take maximum advantage of my file folder for cutting out my keys 
and reducing the amount of time spent by lining them up against each other. We are now ready to start cutting out the parting plane for our mold. Use a marker to follow along the edges of the part. This is just a rough guideline to begin your first cut. It will take trial and error repeatedly to get a nice fitting parting plane. Try and stay inside of the outer edge of the part as it's always easier to cut away a little extra than it is to try and put back something that was taken away. Again using an X-Acto knife carefully cut out your rough guideline. This is just a first fit cut. It will take numerous fits before you get the exact template that you need. After you've done your first rough cut, it is time to test fit the template in place. Make some additional marks and then trim some more. If you take your time working your way out to the outer edge of the trim lines, you end up with a good fitting parting plane. Once again, it will take a few tries before you get it to fit exactly the way you want. After you have it in place, it is time to mark your key locations. You are now ready to trace out your key locations over the parting plane. Make it slightly oversized so that when you go to cut it out, there will be plenty of room for the key to get through. Be careful with the X-Acto knife as you're cutting out the keys. After all the key locations have been cut out, it is now time to test fit the keys in place.
After all the keys have been fit in place, use a single drop from your glue gun on the edge of every single key to hold it down. This will work fine and will give you a nice tight fitting key. Be careful as you're pressing down the edges of the keys. The glue is very hot and you can feel it right through the paper. After you have finished assembling the parting plane and checked it for fit on the model, it is time to coat it with shellac. It is necessary to coat it with shellac as well as the model so it allows for an easy release from the latex rubber. Make sure that you coat both sides of the parting plane with the shellac. To locate the parting plane to the model, as a temporary measure we use modeling clay. This will keep the parting plane in place while we apply the first coats of latex onto it. After it is glued in place by the latex, we will remove the clay and then apply latex to the other side. It is critical to get the parting plane located exactly where you want it to be. Once the latex rubber goes on, you will not be able to move it. As an extra precaution, a little bit of glue can be used on the edges of the parting plane where it comes in contact with the box. As we begin our application of the latex here, there are two points to consider. One, as this is the print coat, it must go on carefully and it must go on thin. Two, as you're applying latex to the model as well as to the parting plane, you must be very careful as the parting plane's attachment to the model is very delicate at this point and can easily be shifted. Very carefully apply latex between the model and onto the parting plane anywhere where you can have a contact. This will act as an adhesive to hold the parting plane in place. Once this coat of latex dries, you can remove the clay from the back of the parting plane and apply latex to the other side as well. Again, be very gentle in your application. If you do this carefully, you will be rewarded with a separation plane that is absolutely perfect.
As you can see here, we have some good contact points between the parting plane and the model. After the initial coat of latex has dried, you can now apply the latex more liberally to the model on the parting plane. You do not have to worry about the parting plane moving anymore. As the latex is very thin in some areas, you must apply the latex thinly so as to not create any air bubbles or voids in the surface of the mold. Make sure you get the latex right inside the keys. It's critical that they have a good buildup of latex in them as well as on the outside so that the keying of the two halves of the mold will be perfect. After the first couple of layers of latex are on the model and the parting plane, you can work for a more rapid buildup of the latex. You need to put on at least 12 to 16 layers of latex with this particular brand of latex versus 24 to 30 layers of latex with a thinner latex as this will give you an eighth of an inch thickness wall in your mold rubber which is the ideal thickness for the latex mold.
As our coats of latex begin to build up on the model, you will see a change in color from a totally clear to an off yellow. As the coats build up, it will eventually turn completely yellow and opaque and you will have a nice thick coating all the way around the entire surface of the model and the parting plane. Remember to apply an equal number of layers of latex to both sides of the mold. You have two separate planes here and both sides must be covered equally. Again, make sure the latex gets inside the keys as well as on the bottom of the keys on the other side of the mold. Cover the side walls of the box so you have a nice sturdy box that will grasp onto the shell material and you will have a high quality mold once you have completed applying all the rubber coats. We are now ready to begin preparation for the building of the shell for our latex rubber mold. Make sure to take plenty of opportunities to test fit your cardboard in place before you lock anything down and begin gluing and claying things up. It is better to get everything to fit perfectly beforehand than try and fix a mistake in the middle of the shell making process. Use whatever materials you have on hand and keep your costs at a minimum. Remember that you are going to be building a shell out of plaster here, so the cardboard as it is set up must be strong enough to support the weight of the plaster from both sides of the shell as you are building two halves of a shell. Use plenty of tape. You don't want anything falling apart on you in the middle of wet plaster being applied. After our basic box is created, it is now time to seal the two separate halves of the mold shell. Using a glue gun to start off with, 
apply glue along the seam between the edge of the parting plane and the cardboard box. The glue will stick to both the latex and the cardboard box and give you a starting point before you apply clay to give you a nice smooth parting plane. Be very generous with your glue application. Once again, use soft oil-based clay to fill in the gap between the parting plane and the cardboard box. This will create a nice smooth surface for the plaster shell where it meets both the box and the latex mold and your parting plane. After you have finished claying up the mold shell, you need to apply a generous coat of petroleum jelly over the surface of the cardboard and also onto the latex as well. This will allow for an easy release of the plaster from the cardboard and from the latex mold. Again, be generous with the application of the Vaseline or petroleum jelly onto the sides of the cardboard. Once again, this will allow for an easy release of the cardboard off of the plaster shell that you are creating. We are now ready to begin the application of plaster for our plaster shell. The real secret to the plaster shell making process is in the mixing of the plaster. Here you add the plaster to the water, not the water to the plaster. The trick is to continue adding the plaster slowly into the water, allowing it to sift in, which allows the particles of plaster to absorb water. Once the plaster in the bucket has achieved the look of a dried creek bed, you have enough plaster in there and you are ready to begin mixing the plaster with your hands. Take your time working your fingers through the plaster until it is all thoroughly soaked and then begin application of the plaster to the mold. Apply the plaster everywhere within the half of the mold box. Make sure that the application is even and covers the entire surface of the cardboard walls and the latex rubber and the area that supports the latex at the bottom, which is the base. You don't have a good view of this area of the shell, so be careful and make sure you get enough plaster in there without having any air pockets. Take your time in working the plaster in to all the different areas and make sure you have a nice even wall coating all the way around. As soon as the first half of the plaster shell is dry, we basically repeat the same process on the other side. As the mold is already locked here in place, all we really need to do here is apply modeling clay to the parting plane.
Make sure you do a good job of smoothing over the clay to create a nice even seam line between the two halves of the mold. A generous application of petroleum jelly or Vaseline is required over the cardboard surface again to allow an easy release of the cardboard off of the plaster. Once again, as in the first half of the shell, mix the plaster very well with water. Use your fingers to work through and break up the plaster and make sure that it is well soaked with the water. Any hard particles of plaster will end up weakening your shell. So take your time here to mix the plaster really well without beating air into the mix. As before, when we apply the plaster, you want to make sure that you have a nice even coating of plaster over all surfaces. Be considerate of the fact that the back part of the shell is not really well visible, so splash the plaster into place, fill it in nicely, and make sure that there are no air pockets. Cover the side walls as well with a nice even coat of plaster. Keeping the coat nice and even will give you a nice strong shell and at the same time something that is not too heavy and unmanageable. We are now ready to demold the shell. If we did a good job of application of our Vaseline, the cardboard box should peel off fairly easily. Again, be careful as you're doing this as you do not want to damage the plaster shell during the demolding process. The cardboard should peel away rather easily. If necessary, use a scraper blade to help remove the cardboard from the shell. We are now ready to separate the two halves of the mold shell. This should come apart fairly easily once we've worked the clay off. Using a small tool, we peel away any excess paper and pry apart the two halves of the shell. Do not use excessive force here as you will only damage the plaster shell and it really should not be necessary. With a little bit of effort, two halves of the shell will peel off the latex mold. As you can see, it pulls apart nice and easily. Carefully set the two halves of the shell off to the side as it is now time to cut the rubber mold. As you can see here, our paper parting plane will make this process much easier. Using a sharp X-Acto knife, you very carefully work your way through the edge of the rubber. Latex rubber does not cut very easily, so take your time with this as you've got your fingers right in the middle of it and you really do not want to get cut. Work your way down the edge, pulling apart at the same time, and this will help ease the process.
As you are cutting the parting plane next to the surface of the model, be very careful to keep the edge nice and straight. You do not want to have a bad parting plane between the two halves of the mold. As you can see here, the model pulls out very easily from the latex mold. We are now ready to finish cutting apart the two halves of the mold. We are now ready to cast a cement mix into our latex mold. For the purpose of calculation, we break down our cement mix formula as 1,000 grams of cement, 1,000 grams of sand, and 150 grams of water. To produce a high quality casting, the ideal components here would be triple zero mesh fine sand and white cement. These take pigment really well and allow you to create all kinds of interesting effects in your concrete. Pre-mix all the dry components of your concrete formula prior to adding the water.
because we are only mixing up a small amount of concrete here to pour into a small mold, we are going to mix this by hand. Again, basically doing the same process as when you mix plaster. Use your hand to mix the cement, sand, and water to a nice smooth consistency. If you need to add a little extra water, you may, but basically you want this to be no more than a pourable consistency. Once the cement is fully mixed, it can be poured into the mold. Pour it in slowly as the mix is very thick. After the mold has been filled, move it around and vibrate it, shake it, tap the sides. This will help release all the air bubbles out of the concrete, allow it to float to the surface and will give you a nice casting.
After our concrete pour has cured completely, it is now time to demold the mold. We loosen the straps, carefully remove them as to not damage our plaster shell, and you will see that the mold halves pull apart very easily. And we have a concrete casting.